ahead of Father's Day, actor Greg Ellis stresses the importance of fatherhood and says the family law system is making it hard for many dads to see their children. His new book, The Respondent, Exposing the Cartel of Family Law, addresses that issue. He spoke to Ellen about his story. Greg, it is an honor to get to have you here on Great Day Washington. Thank you for joining us. And thank you, too, for talking about something we see a lot, which is this cancel culture right now. I'm sure it is even more in Hollywood than any other place. Yeah, very much so. There seems to be, and thank you for having me, Ellen. Um, there seems to be this uh, identity politics um, now rife in so many institutions in America. And uh, I think it's imperative that we start talking more about it um, within our cultural conversation. Uh, there's a fear-based mentality that I'm seeing, particularly here in Hollywood, with regards to the approach to the liberal arts and humanities. Um, so, yeah, I talk about this in my book, uh, The Respondent. I was going to mention you just wrote a book. Congratulations on this new book as well. And you, you do mention this and how it relates to your family. How does all that tie together? Like, what's the story behind that? Well, the book is part memoir, part meditation and part manifesto, really. It's a portrait of perhaps the most misunderstood uh, aspect of the American legal system. Um, which is family law. When I found out that uh, uh, through my own experience and then through the, the experience of tens, if not hundreds of thousands of other parents um, and partners and families in America, uh, it's the one branch of our legal system that doesn't offer, uh, doesn't have due process. Uh, it doesn't have um, um, a preponderance of innocent or proven guilty. Yeah. So when I found out that criminals get get the presumption of innocence and our families, our parents and de facto our children don't. Um, that was that was really disturbing to me. And the book really is a guidebook uh, of sorts and, and hopefully um, a somewhat indispensable read for not only parents or uh, fathers, because I'm a father, enduring the grief of the living grief of child separation, but all and everyone interested in learning about the, the massive overreach and unrelenting brutality of family law. Yeah, you mentioned um, your family and your children. I know you kind of went through and going back to that cancel culture, something similar with, with your family, right? Of feeling canceled from your family? Yeah, there is a, an evisceration uh, of um, the fact, an obliteration really of the family. I mean, it's not hyperbole and it sounds like a Hollywood movie when I say that my freedom was stolen and my children were kidnapped or, or I was dadnapped from them. And my family was really obliterated, destroyed, uh, shattered, if you will. Wow. Um, uh, but through that experience, through my personal uh, odyssey through family law, uh, what I discovered was that I was just one of so many in a system um, that really is, is biased against men, against the father. Um, it's the devaluation of men, the expendability of men that I've talked about before. You know, when I looked at some of the statistics, and again, I mentioned this in the book, every day, uh, 4,000 uh, children lose a parent because of our archaic and inhumane family court system. And um, then I looked at social isolation. You know, we, we keep hearing messages of social distancing, which I think is a terrible message to be telling people. I think we should be telling people physical distancing and social connectedness. Hmm. And that fabric of our, our families and our familial bonds um, should be tended to more. And with social isolation and suicides, I think, on the rise, um, I looked at the statistics and every day, uh, 10 divorced men commit suicide in America and now one in three yeah. children in our country are without their father. And to, yeah. to, to learn that America is the world leader in so many amazing things, um, but in one aspect, it's not. Uh, America is the world leader in single parent families. And, yeah. and I think we have to start having a conversation about this more. I was going to say, I mean, I, we don't have a conversation about this, so thank you for, for bringing it to us. Is there something you hope changes or what would that actionable item be? And do you think it's for families across the U.S. or, or more so in Hollywood? Is it different? I think it's for everyone. Look, I, you know, I wrote my book for, you know, not just people going through divorce, um, stuck in the system, people who have, have become divorced, but also extended families of uh, people who are connected to, whether it's grandparents or whether it's aunts, uncles, sisters, brothers. Um, and I think 
what I'd like to see is uh, obviously an introduction of a presumption of innocence and due process and jurisprudence in, in family law and that branch of the legal system. I'd love to see equal shared parenting, a default position, a presumption of 50-50 uh, shared parenting just to begin with, so that people like... Um, um, Brad Pitt, who was recently, uh, Brad and Angie, I know it's Angie's birthday today, um, you know, he doesn't have to fight to get to that 50-50 position. It's the default position of parents who are responsible and should there be a modification of uh, visitation or custody or whatever it may be, um, that can come after the fact. But that's not the, the position right now. Uh, it's usually uh, the mother, if we look at the statistics, the mother gets most of the custodial time and the father is seen to be not as important, not as nurturing. And I think we have to balance the matriarch and the patriarch and the need for um, children you know, when they're young. They, you know, it takes a mother to raise a boy um, uh, and it takes a father to raise a man. Yeah, you need both. It sounds like the start of a very long road, but Greg, thank you for bringing it again to our Great Day Washington viewers today. And great to meet you as well. It's a pleasure to meet you, Ellen. Thank you very much. Hopefully see you again sometime.